It's no surprise that Iraq is going the way of Afghanistan. That is, we've lost control and, to a certain extent, lost the point. Like a nanny cam trained on the untrusted babysitter, the military is now using our spy satellites to conduct surveillance on our own allied army, the very force we helped create and, to this day, alongside whom our troops fight. In our third story on the countdown, an Iraqi army displaying an unprecedented level of autonomy and aggression. The Taliban reasserting itself in Afghanistan, causing the highest number of coalition troop deaths since the start of the invasion. And an American public less spooked by terrorism and more fed up with war. Why shouldn't we be? Especially after this morning's foreboding assessment by Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen. The Taliban and their supporters have without question grown more effective and more aggressive in recent weeks and as the casualty figures clearly demonstrate. We're right in the middle of the fighting season, if you will, uh, and we've seen the Taliban revert to the kind of violence that uh, uh, is uh, that is tied to uh, IEDs, suicide bombings, th those kinds of things, and I think we can expect more of that, and I think it's going to be a pretty tough fight for a while. A situation deteriorating and no solution in sight as Iraq continues to siphon resources. And we've apparently... I've made no secret of my desire to flow more forces, U.S. forces, to Afghanistan just as soon as I can. Nor have I been shy about saying that those forces will not be available unless or until the situation in Iraq permits us to do so. And we've apparently had it. According to a new CNN poll, 68% of Americans are totally over the Iraq war. And the percentage of Americans afraid of an imminent attack on U.S. soil has dropped to its lowest level since 9-11. Let's bring in Larry Korb, senior fellow at the Center for American Progress, a former assistant secretary of defense in the Reagan administration. Dr. Korb, Larry, thanks very much for joining us. Nice to be with you, Rachel. We're reconciling an American public that is done with the war in Iraq with news that a war we thought was done, Afghanistan, isn't and never was. U.S. troops coming back from Afghanistan sometimes call that place Forgotistan. Do you think that Afghanistan is getting unforgotten in our politics now? Well, I hope not. But, you know, the clip you played from Admiral Mullen shows uh, we need more troops in Afghanistan. But Mullen himself is one of the people to blame. Uh, about a couple of months ago when he was asked about this, he said, well, in Iraq we do what we must. In Afghanistan, we do what we can. No, those are where the attacks of 9-11 came from. That's where al-Qaeda is reconstituting itself. There was no al-Qaeda in Iraq before we went there. Uh, there was none of the other reasons that the president gave turned out to be true. We've got ourselves mired down in the wrong place right now. The Iraqi people want us out. The American people want us out. The government we created, we, ca we can't trust. So why do we continue to give that priority? Based on what the administration told us, both Iraq and Afghanistan were supposed to be wars about avenging 9-11. But as you say, that is still unfinished business. The RAND Corporation just this month says that al-Qaeda is as strong as it was on 9-11. Bin Laden and Zawahiri are still out there. Do we still get be afraid politics on terrorism in this context? Do you think we, we still should? Well, I think we need to be concerned that al-Qaeda has reconstituted itself on the Pakistan-Afghanistan border, and they will be able then uh, to carry out attacks on us or our, 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 our friends and allies around the world. Had we continued in Afghanistan, not diverted ourselves to Iraq, we wouldn't have this problem. Mm -hmm. We took our eye off the ball. We thought Afghanistan was one. We took out a lot of our troops and our attention, and what happened is the key front in the war on terror uh, has uh, become uh, str uh, become stronger while we dealt with something that was not a, not a threat. We've got our priorities exactly backwards. And meanwhile, with over 140,000 troops still in Iraq, this spying on the Iraqi army is apparently because our military was caught off guard by some recent Iraqi military ops. And now we need to keep tabs on them. Some are saying that right. this is actually a good sign. I think it means that our Iraq policies, in the largest sense, make no sense. We're now spying on the very army that we created, trained, and armed. What is your take on this? Well, basically, the Iraqis don't want us there. And what has happened is they don't like the fact that we're telling them what to do. They have their own agenda, which is different from ours. We want a peaceful, stable, democratic Iraq. 
What the Iraqi, the people running Iraq want is they want an Iraq that is dominated by one group, the Shias. They want an Iraq that has a close relationship with Iran, which we do not want to have. And so what's happening is they're basically using us for their own, purp uh, their own purposes. When they went into Basra, we, uh, this operation we didn't know about, we had to bail them out. Had we not done that, what would have happened is you would have had a, a lot more uh, damage and a lot more carnage in that country. Larry Korb, formerly of the Reagan administration, now with the Brookings Institution. Thanks for your time and your insight tonight. Nice to be with you.